Good morning, viewers. It's approximately 07.30 hours on a lovely Saturday morning as I head home for the weekend. Such joy. I have just escaped the catchment area of Vosa at Risby without being stopped. Who actually this seems to be very quiet recently, Vosa. I've seen them for a while. I don't want to. Really. I mean, the ones I met are nice, nice guys, but I've got better things to do than stand by and chat with them, really. I've been doing the job as long as I have. Um, yeah, containers or freezers or general knowledge or whatever. Anyway, um, there's a problem in this country. I know he's all waiting for this one. This is sort of the general election spiel, uh, review, whatever, kind of. You know, there's a problem with this country though. Um, in 2001, there was some, some protest by truck drivers um, complaining about the price of diesel. And uh, obviously, most of you will know that they, they located the refineries and stuff like this. And Tony Blair stood up in the House of Commons and he said, I will not be brought to my knees by a bunch of truck drivers. <laughs> and three days later, he was on his knees crying, begging for them to stop. And after that point, he actually made, um, this doesn't seem to be common knowledge, despite the amount of times I've said it, but he did actually make peaceful protest illegal. Um, now, obviously, protests have gone ahead since 2001 in various forms uh, and numbers, and all credit to the people who do that. Um, I just don't have the time. Um, but basically, if there's a few people having a protest on the street, on a, desk, on a Sunday, say, and the desk sergeant's a bit bored, he can, in fact, link them. And, and there's, a pro there's always a problem with what's supposed to be a democracy when... Yeah, I'm not talking about violent protest or anything like that, but when you can't do things the way you would wish to do them, when, the, when even when you start, the message is already somewhat watered down because of rules and regulations. Um, there's a problem. And obviously we just had a general election, and obviously the Tories got a majority. I'll admit I was wrong about that, I didn't see that coming at all. Um, but, um, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> but now of course, yes, now, sorry, now of course everyone on, on Facebook and Twitter and everything else is saying, oh, the, the election was rigged and 50,000 votes went missing here and there were Tory civil servants counting votes, making sure the correct numbers didn't go in. It, it's all a distraction, guys. This is, they want you to talk about this for the next two and a half years. Because, no, you know, nothing is going to change. But that's the result. You know, and, and also at the end of the day, you don't hear the SMB crying about the result, do you? You know. Um, I'm not saying people are sore losers, but. There's not enough. There's not enough there for, for any sort of recounts or anything to happen. Um, specifically because of, of how many votes have gone missing. And they so you know fuck the general election basically, right? It, it's all it's all a show really. And I want you to keep talking about that show. Maybe they even do engineer votes going missing here and there. Maybe they do even engineer something a bit scandalous and, and feed it to the press, but it's a blatant lie. But it, it's all distraction techniques, which is what the Labour government were very good at. Um, all this equality and diversity. And, you know, I've said it before, it's not equality and diversity if it's rammed down your throat. And people realised it was being rammed down your throat, so they started fighting about it, and that's exactly what the government wanted. Um, you know, because the more attention that we're focusing on, on infighting and, and arguing about government policy, the less attention we're focusing on them. Um, 
maybe that's why the Tories got a large majority. I don't know. Um, I don't really care. What I do know is that Labour has been knocked down to its socks. Um, and so have the Lib Dems. So even though Labour is still a large party, that in effect takes out two of the main parties that have been predominant in politics for 50 odd years. Minimum. I think Labour was set up in 1911 or something. There were the days when they opposed the government. Um, it was Labour who introduced the NHS originally, I think. Um, but we don't see that now, you know, all we see is them coupling up together. So really, you know, what we need to do is is we need more and more fringe parties. We need, this, this is what takes the power away from them. You may think, oh, this, this party's only got one MP, and oh, that party's only got five councillors, but it all adds up. And it's, it's using the distraction against them, because the more interruptions they have, starting from local council right up to Whitehall, <laughs> by God, I think they're going to have a few interruptions for the SNP. The less of their agenda they can achieve, and when you bring that agenda, that achievement of that agenda down to under 50%, which, I th you know, I think we're well on the way to actually with this, this last election, um, then you're winning. Then you're winning. Then, because then they can't cut up together and force all the things through that they want through. Look at the amount of laws that have been invented in this country. No smoking in public workplaces. Who asked for that? Um, covers over cigarettes. Who asked for that? You know, uh, human rights. Labour brought that in. Who asked for that? That, that was Sherry Blair's bloody dream child thing. Um, because she was a human rights lawyer. And sometimes now I see um, people saying that the Tories are going to scrap human rights. Well, yeah, okay, in, in a few cases it has its uses, but basically the government only wanted it to use it for their own advantage, um, and specifically for Sherry Blair to make loads of fucking cash. So it was never intended to help us, it, it probably has helped a few, but before that we had common sense, you know, um, and because of human rights, all the judges have become a right bunch of namby pamby wet bags. Um, and they're too scared to speak out half the time and, and make what are now deemed to be controversial judgments what, what used to be called justice, you know. Um, the, the judge who congratulated a burglar for breaking into a house because that took a lot of courage, springs to mind. Um, because it all panders to the underdog in that sense. One who has not the underdog, that's wrong. The one who has done wrong, you know, because we can't be seen to offend their human rights. Well, that's not really the point of it, and if that's what it's going to be used for, I'd rather not fucking have it, to be honest. Um, you know, it's just things like that. Um, and all the health and safety stuff has been invented. There's actually an EU directive, an entire sheet of A4 paper, dedicated to putting the cat back on a bottle of bleach before you put it back in the cupboard. Because we don't know that. We haven't survived <laughs> 78 generations of human beings since the dinosaurs died out. Um, you know, <laughs> I, uh, how, you know, how we survived that time, I don't know, because obviously someone needed to tell us, someone needed to get paid to tell us to put the cat back on the bottle of bleach before we put it back in the cleaning cupboard. I, and all this stuff, and it's all distractions, the, the whole EU thing. Uh, yes, we've been sold down the river, but, again, everyone's arguing about it. And, oh, let's have a referendum, everyone's arguing about that. Yeah, the thing is, if we do vote for it, and it's, it goes against it, which it will, if the country has a vote, then anything they've done so far, any legal papers they've signed, any binding contracts they've signed, are worthless because it is a free vote by the people, and that's what the people want. But in the meantime, they throw all these things in the middle, so that you never quite get to that EU referendum, because the reason they keep lying about having it is because they don't want it, because they know it's going to go against it. Um, it just... 
you know, if it wasn't so serious, you'd, you'd actually sit back and laugh. Um, but really, we've come to this point now where we must get rid of these people who seem to think that they are, well, they are running our lives. That, that's what it comes down to. You know, we, we, do, we are having less and less uh, freedom of choice. Um, I mean, it's just the ridiculousness of something like the thing with, with, with putting all cigarettes in cupboards and then in shops and then what's written on the front of the cupboard door? Tobacco on sale here. Well, how does that help people quit smoking when all they can see is the word tobacco and stuff like that, you know? It doesn't. It's, it's another little bit of civil liberty taken away, just subtly. You know, it's pointless fucking laws. That these these people have nothing better to do. All the laws have been written. You know. So yes, we need to start fighting back. General election, bit of a joke, but we're down to one main party in essence. Um, and they ain't going to take long to knock off the perch with with all the French parties coming in. Right. So, uh, that's it for today. I shall um, upload this later on when I get home. So if you haven't fallen back to sleep watching it, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I will see you next time.